I really don't feel like doing anything today. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video. I just know I need to do something today. So I guess this video is going to be the ultimate cleaning motivation when you absolutely don't want to do anything. But yes, there is some stuff going on in my life. I'm sure I will share it in time. Please be patient with me, but yeah, life still goes on. My kids are all good and healthy, don't worry about that. And because they are good and healthy, I get to clean up the messes that they have made throughout the house. So that is what we are going to do today. I have some family coming into town tonight and I'd like the house to be presentable and in good shape when they arrive. So I just, I gotta get stuff done even when I, really just want to lay in bed and do nothing all day while my kids are at school. <sighs> but yes, I'm rambling because I think I'm just trying to avoid having to do anything, but I need to actually do something. So the best way to do something is to just freaking do it. Let's go. First, we're going to tidy this office slash our guest room because someone is going to be staying in here. Just got to get my work stuff out of the way. This thing I got from Sam's Club and I absolutely love it. I'll try to link it if I can find it. Anyways, throughout this video, I'm probably going to be just rambling on about random things to keep my mind in a happier place. So if you can, if you want to hang out with me in La La Land in this video, then let's go. I want to be in La La Land today. I need to grab my cleaning caddy downstairs, so let's grab that quick. Oh, there are my Peter Pan slippers. I was looking for them and couldn't find them, so I'm wearing fuzzy socks today. But here is my cleaning kit. So you got all the basics in here. We have a probiotic cleaner, glass cleaner, bathroom cleaner, wood cleaner, granite cleaner, and then an antibacterial multi-surface cleaner, and then a variety of rags. There's also a little magic eraser hidden in there. And the last thing I need are gloves. I'm using an antibacterial cleaner in this area because I often eat food over here at my desk. I know you're supposed to let it sit for longer than 10 minutes, but y'all just, just be happy that I'm even doing anything today. But yes, I'm using an antibacterial cleaner here because I often eat at my computer. never clean these windows and I feel like you could you can really tell when you look at them all right and then this top part really should go get my Swiffer it is never a good idea for me to climb up onto things we're gonna we're gonna try to clean this window better anyone else's windows Ooh. pop out like this hard to tell with the wood underneath but this is really really dirty Yeah, I, I need a second pass. Oh my gosh, there is just so much dirt on this. I'm choosing happiness. Still not perfect. I mean, it's way better than it was before at least. This one hasn't been cleaned versus this one. It's practically perfect. I'm using this already dirty one just to get the first level of filth off. Pass number two with a fresh cloth. I'm testing out the new Ever Spring polishing cloths from Target. Let's see how these polish up. They don't feel that different from the old ones. I mean, they work. They're, they're a decent polishing cloth. I can't get all the streaks out of this. I feel like it's destined to have some streaks. Maybe I should have done this at night when the sun's not beating down, quickly drying the chemicals onto it. I mean, it's definitely an improvement. It's better than the top windows. We'll, we'll just pull these shades down a little bit. No, no one needs to see that I neglected the top. Doing a quick vacuum of the space and then we'll move to the bathroom. Let me know in the comments below, what do you do when you're feeling out of sorts? I mean, I'm alive and well. I'm trying to keep things in perspective here, but yes, it's probably one of the toughest seasons in my life right now. So any helpful tips on how to get through hard times are more than welcome. Next, we're going to clean bathrooms. And oh, I gotta install this too, but we are going to clean a bathroom that y'all probably have not really seen before. The Jack and Jill 
bathroom that's between my two kids' bedrooms. Now we only just started using this Jack and Jill bathroom setup and you can see it's already a pretty gooey mess here. But we were having issues with my kids running back and forth between the two rooms for such a long time that we ended up just permanently locking the insides of both of these doors so that they couldn't run back and forth and keep each other up all night. But now they have finally matured enough, I guess you could say, to the point where they don't do that. So we're actually able to get some good use out of this convenient two sink Jack and Jill bathroom setup. And now, now we just gotta, gotta tidy it up. Clearing everything off the counters first so I can give everything a good spray down and wipe down. I'm using my Swiffer to do my Swiffer large mirror and window cleaning hack. This makes it so easy to clean all your glass surfaces without having to climb up on counters and potentially injuring yourself. Then to get all this sticky toothpaste off quickly and easily, I'm using one of my magic erasers. It takes off the goo so quickly and then you can spray down the surface with your general stone or granite cleaner. I always remove the toilet seat to give the area where it connects a thorough cleaning. I am not a scientist. I don't know why the pea particles all attract to that area, but I like to address it. Otherwise, the toilet just never feels fully clean for me. I don't really like this bathroom cleaner any, anymore at this point. I didn't really think through the having to clean this drip catcher portion of it, but it's this one's still pretty new since, like I said, we haven't really been using this bathroom much at all. But yeah, I, I, just, I wouldn't recommend this product. I like my Invisi brushes so much more now that these are getting replaced with those. What about this portion? I've just been using toilet paper because I, I like that I can just toss it into the toilet when I'm done. I'm making it little by little, y'all. I'm not nearly as efficient or productive as I feel like I normally am, but I'm just gonna be happy that I'm doing anything today. I think that's the key to getting things done when you feel motivated to do nothing, is to just be happy with anything. And if you're happy with anything, you're more motivated to just keep doing things. Plus, little rewards little rewards between every room, like getting a little piece of candy or some caffeinated beverages, whatever, that's keeping me going. I keep telling myself, after I clean this section, I'm gonna go get a little bit more Diet Dr. Pepper. And then after I clean this whole thing, I have a large reward that I'm going to get myself. Still haven't figured out what that is yet though, so I have all day to think about that. But now, I'm going to finish listening to a book on tape. Hopefully by the time I'm doing the voiceover of it, I can tell you a little bit more about it in this cleaning section here. In this season of my life, I read the book Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Now, I won't give away the full story, but I'll give a brief summary and spoiler alert just in case you just started the book. But I'll tell you now what I took away from it. Basically, the story starts out as the main character, Nora, about to unalive herself. Now, don't worry, y'all. I am not in that state right now. I'm just telling you how the story starts. And as Nora is doing that, she enters what's called the Midnight Library, which is a giant infinite library in her mind. And each book in the library is essentially every possible version of her life and how it plays out from that point forward. So if she had decided to marry her ex-fiance, what her life would have been like if she had decided to stay in the band from her youth, what her life would have been like, etc., etc. And the book goes over many of these different versions of her life from the Midnight Library. And again, not giving away the end, however, it's probably easy to deduce what it would be. My biggest takeaways from the story are about regret and moving forward. In regards to regret, Nora in the beginning had a massive list of life regrets as she looked back on her life. And as she was thinking about all her regrets, she was choosing to delve into the versions, the books of her life where she didn't make these so-called mistakes. And 
Even when she undid the regrets of her past, it by no means made her life perfect or even necessarily better. So own your choices, don't look back at the woulda, coulda, shouldas. If a decision you made could be looked at as regret, choose to take it as a lesson instead that just makes you a wiser person moving forward. So long story long, that was my heavily worded version of saying hashtag no regrets. I am realizing for the first time ever, it's especially disgusting on this side, how disgustingly dirty it is right here. I've never cleaned this hinged part. I, I never really saw it. Like usually I only pull it out this much, pull everything out, but I pulled it all the way out and look at how disgustingly dirty that is. We need to fix this. I sprayed it down with a degreaser. Don't ask me why I used a degreaser. I don't even really know what this stuff is. And then I'm getting my Rubbermaid power scrubber and scrubbing away all of this hard stuck on whatever it is. This stuff was really hard to get off. It was hard to get it out of all the different little nooks and crannies, even with this cool tool but I got as much as I could done. It's way better than it was before. Not perfect, but better done than perfect. Now for cleaning up the dishes and just the overall island. Considering how I have been feeling <laughs> recently, I'm actually impressed with myself that this sink is not overflowing with dishes. Then for a quick sink scrub, I am using my favorite Dawn Power Wash Free and Clear. These Minecraft Funtainers I got from Walmart. The Funtainers are the cheapest at Walmart that I've ever seen. They're usually around $16 or $17 each at Target, but they were only $13.48 at Walmart. almost done with my least favorite part of cleaning which is always the kitchen just because I have to clean it every freaking day and then we are going to move to quick tidying our living room just folding the blankets putting our very few pillows into place I used to have tons of throw pillows on this couch but they all end up on the floor so I'm just doing the minimum here and here we are a clean living and dining area Wiping down the toilet with disposable antibacterial wipes and I'm going to install the new toilet brush here. So I'm taking the lid off the tank and there's an old bottle of Fabuloso from my TikTok cleaning hacks video. My thoughts on the hack is I won't do that again. The juice just isn't worth the squeeze. Just buy the little toilet tabs to put in the back if you want a fresh flush every time. I got the Invisi brush from the Squatty Potty brand. I'll have it linked below, but I installed it in my downstairs bathroom maybe like two-ish months ago, and I have been loving it. It gets rid of the visual clutter of the toilet cleaner brush, which is never really the visual you want to be looking at in a bathroom. So I bought more and I'm installing them in a couple of my other bathrooms. All right, I attached it here, and now you just hook it on to the back of your water tank. Boom, it's installed. And now you got the toilet brush here that 
goes in there and you can tuck it out of the way and it floats off the ground. Ignore the disgusting plunger. Wish I could get rid of that visual clutter. But yeah, I love this Invisi brush. And then when you need it, you just pop it out to the side, pull it out and use it. Now, could the brush be a little bit, I don't know, heftier, sturdier? I, I guess, but it's good enough. And I just love how it's out of the way. Next, our little bidet butt sprayer thing here. I need to get it not hanging off of our towel rack. Not a good look for when guests come and stay with us. So I got my handy dandy command hooks that I use to hold my bottles in my kitchen. And we're going to hook one of these onto the side of the toilet so that it has a place to hang off the side of the toilet and not be using up our nice towel rack that is not meant to hold butt sprayers. Should I, I, I'm not even gonna bother taking that sticker off because this is going to completely cover it. Yay, can now hook onto the toilet. That is a much more appropriate place for the bidet thing. <laughs> Cannot believe I waited this long to do that. I need to do this now in the other bathroom that we have that has the butt sprayer. I'm sorry, I have to do that now in the other bathroom where we have one of those bidet sprayers. One of my sons has had to move back into our TV video game room. Trust me, he does not turn it on or not get to turn it on when he's sleeping at night. But with the kids being back in school, they have to wake up so early to get to their bus stop for kindergarten on time. We're up at 6 a.m. every morning, which they are like me. They're circadian, cir ceridium, circadian, whatever clock is in your head that tells you go to go to sleep. My twins are like me. They want to stay up all night. So waking up for kindergarten has been a huge problem in our house. We've had to separate the twins and one of them just has to go in the media room because we don't have an extra bedroom. If they can't figure out how to sleep, they just, we got to separate them. Anyways, we don't have a little side table for him in here because there is just no room for how the doors have to open in here. So I bought these stroller cup holders and figured if they work on a stroller, why wouldn't they work on the edge of his bed so that he can have a cup holder in his room? It came in a two pack, so I'll put one on my other son's bed who doesn't have a side table either, but let's see. All right, perfect little cup holder. Freaking Kleenex everywhere. Perfect little cup holder for him. Otherwise, he has a bad habit of kicking his waters and stuff over onto the floor. Wow, I'm, it's so simple, but I'm kind of proud of myself for this find. Let's put this one on my other child's bed. My youngest still has a little tent over his bed, but we'll, we'll still stick it in the same spot that we stuck the last there. one in. <sighs> I feel like this is probably as much as my little body can handle today. So still got a lot done, all things considered, being that I wanted to get zero done and I got many a tasks done. So I'm proud of myself. I'm still gonna go treat myself, probably gonna go get a huge cookie or a piece of cake or something. But yeah, I'm kind of in a funk right now and I don't really know what the direction of my channel is going to be over the next few months. As I am processing this, I mean, I'm definitely still going to do the shop with me videos and cleaning type videos here and there, but they may be fewer and further between. So go follow me on Instagram or TikTok if you're gonna miss me, which hopefully you are. I, I'm gonna miss you guys. Also, when I do post over here on YouTube, it may not be every single Monday and Thursday like it was for a little while there. That was just a lot. So turn on your little notification bell thing. I don't, I don't know where it is. Turn on the notification bell so that you are notified when I do randomly decide to post. And I don't know, I'm going to be reading a lot more and doing a lot of soul searching 
in the next few months. So who knows, maybe I'll start doing video essays or I, I don't know, what kind of content do y'all watch other than my channel, obviously? Who are the other creators that you follow? What types of content are you the most interested in? That maybe I just need new inspiration in my life. I have been watching more video essays though and I do feel like that could be a fun thing to dabble in. But I don't know, let me know in the comments below because I'm trying to refine myself right now and sometimes I do think that even though you're with yourself 100% of the time in your life, sometimes other people really see you and know pieces of you more than you know yourself parts of you that maybe you've overlooked. And so I'm looking to y'all for some guidance. I've never claimed to know everything or really anything for that matter on this channel. I'm just trying to do the best that I can over here. And I know that oftentimes for people to be able to do their best, they do need to take feedback from the outside world. So th basically I'm just asking for so much advice <laughs> at this point in the video. The other thing I want y'all to let me know in the comments below, any books, podcasts, like YouTube channels again that you think are really helpful for someone going through a plot twist in their life. And yeah, the other thing I wanna say in this video is also just thank you guys so, so, so much for everything, watching my videos, liking, subscribing, following me on other platforms, like writing comments, just engaging with me. It really does mean absolutely more than you know. And sending good vibes to all of you out there because it's easy for me to wallow in my sorrows and get play, playing the smallest violin, like the whole poor me, poor me, but really I know when I go outside of my head and look down on my life rationally, I still live a pretty cushy life. So I'm sending good vibes out to everyone out there because everyone's going through something, I'm sure. No one's life is perfect, but sometimes you need a little help to work through the imperfections. So I hope this video was helpful for you. And I don't know if you could just hear my stomach right then, but I need to go eat. If you wanna keep hanging out with a happier version of me, feel free to click on one of the playlists floating over the screen at this point and Thank you so much for watching this video to this point and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.